What's up y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Shantae Marie here. I'm a military lifestyle vlogger here on the tube and I thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. If you are new here and you have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to see more content like this on my channel. I also would really, really like for you guys to drop a comment in the comments below. I love to interact with you guys and I try to do so as much as I can. I enjoy hanging out with you so much and let's get on into it. So today I'm going to be telling, talking to you guys about your military, military occupational skill. That is your MOS. That is the job that you choose to do for your military career. Now, just because you pick a certain MOS does not mean that you are stuck with that MOS for life. You can reclass to other MOSs. I actually am getting ready to reclass next year. I am a 25 uniform, which is signal. I work on radios. I picked this MOS because I thought that I was going to complete ROTC. I did not think that my MOS was going to matter in the long run and I, I could not have been more wrong with that thought process. Do not let anyone influence your decision on what you do for your job because at the end of the day, it's your job, it's your career, it's your career progression on the line. So you wanna make sure that you choose correctly and that you choose wisely because you can prevent yourself from having so much hassle down the line. So. There are a list of three questions that I highly recommend that you ask your recruiter whenever you are considering joining the military. And I also want to say that although I am active National Guard, I, I think that this video and these questions can go for any branch of the military service, whether Reserve, National Guard, or active duty. This, these are questions that you need to be asking in general. The first question is going to be what? are the career progression possibilities with this MOS. Now you're probably unfamiliar with what I mean by that. So when you pick a specific MOS, you need to know what potential career progression there could be. There are MOSs that top out at a certain rank. And although you're probably gonna get told that that's not true, it may not be true, but it also may take you a very long time to get promoted. You don't want to get stuck with an MOS that's going to make you stagnant. I would have never chosen an MOS that I knew that I would make it to E4 and not be able to make it any higher for like 10 years or having to sit around and basically wait for someone to die for me to be able to progress in my rank and this is extremely important if you're doing national guard or reserves because getting promoted is very difficult in itself so you want to make sure that you're not picking an mos that just has no opportunity for career progression to go hand in hand with that is question number two which is going to be to ask to see the eps list the EPS list is going to be how you're going to see if you're able to get promoted and how easy or difficult it may be. You have to understand though that this list is forever changing. It's constantly changing. So you, your state or whatever branch you enlist in may go through different changes, making it easier some years to get promoted and other years not so easy. A lot of times this changes when there's wars going on or if there's different funding or it just depends. There's a lot that can depend on that, but at least asking to see the promotion list beforehand can give you some sort of guidance. And if you don't understand how the EPS system works, and you don't get the list at all, I would definitely reach out to soldiers that are already in to ask for guidance on that. And your recruiter should be able to help you to understand how to see it. And at the end of the day, it's your career. So if someone ever tells you that, no, I'm not gonna explain the EPS system to you, like there's just no reason, I would honestly not even consider signing any sort of anything until that is explained to you because you don't want to be getting screwed over on your MOS. I'm not saying that that happens a lot, but I'm saying had I have known what I know now, that is a question that I would have asked. So the third thing that I'm going to talk about may be a little bit more specific to the National Guard and Reserves, but if you are an active duty soldier and you 
think you ever may have the opportunity or the want to not be active duty and to join the Guard and Reserves but still receive an active duty paycheck, dang, it just got real dark in here. The sun went under the clouds. Uh, if you ever have any inkling of maybe considering doing that for your job instead of being active duty, then you want to make sure that you ask this question. And that is going to be asking what the website is for full-time positions in your branch of service. Now, if they don't, if they tell you that they don't know, I would Google and see what the full-time, like for me, since I'm in Kansas, it's like the T Kansas Tag website. That site is where they list all full-time Army and Air National Guard positions. These websites exist, so don't let anyone tell you any different. You want to see what MOSs your state is looking for on the full-time side. You also may want to check out usajobs.com because they go based off of your MOS, MOS a lot of the time as well. If you pick an MOS that is not, not highly sought after in the full-time job force in the military, you may get stuck like I did. I've spent the last seven years of my life trying to reclass so that I could get a full-time job in the military and it has been way more difficult than anyone can even begin to fathom. So, picking the right MOS can have a can have a lot of hindrance on whether you are able to work full time as a National Guard or Reserve member. So, if you are active duty, I highly highly consider if you ever think you might want to switch up and be AGR National Guard or Reserve, you really want to make sure that you're asking these questions because if you go pick an MOS like 13 Bravo, it might be very difficult for you to get a full-time job if you decide you don't want to be active duty anymore. All right, so I want to leave you guys with the two MOSs that I think you could not go wrong with picking for your MOS. These are MOSs that feel like everyone needs no matter what state. I, like I said, I'm National Guard, so if you are considering joining the National Guard in a different state, I'm in Kansas. These MOSs are MOSs that every state is going to, one, be looking for full-time personnel in. I also think the skills for these MOSs are transition into the civilian world much, much better than others. I also think that these MOSs are, are opportunities for you to get promoted quicker. I also feel like these two MOSs are jobs that are going to help you out whether you're going to college or working full time. All in all, both of these MOSs are the two MOSs that I wish that I would have picked when I first started because like I said, trying to get a full-time career in the National Guard has taken me seven years because I chose the wrong MOS. So, the first one is going to be 42 Alpha. That's what I am reclassing to next summer. 42 Alpha is a human resource specialist. It goes so far in the civilian sector, and I also feel like when it comes to full-time jobs, there is an abundance of these careers for the AGR world, ADOS, etc etc the other mos is a 92 yankee which is a supply specialist now there are both of these mos's you probably have heard people really complain about them say that they're not fun especially supply uh they may not be fun but when it comes to thinking intelligently and knowing how your career is going to progress. These are very, very smart choices I feel like to make on the MOS side of things and picking jobs where you're going to be able to constantly be looking for promotion and looking forward to that. So if I had to redo it again, those are the two that I would look at. Those are the two that I see the most AGR openings for. If you don't know what AGR is, thumbs up this video and I will make a video all about it because I think it's the best kept secret in the military. And yeah, this basically concludes my video on what MOS I feel like you guys should pick. And I appreciate you guys so much for clicking on this. Like I said before, leave a comment for me in the comments section if you made it this far. If you're new, subscribe, thumbs up the video, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.